Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another session, another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. We have a special guest tonight, Dr. Suchita Kamath. She's from Cerebral Matters, and uh, she's going to talk to us about a very important topic, and that's managing cognitive, social, emotional challenges after ruptured and unruptured aneurysms. She is going to uh, actually make this a two-part session, and this is part one. And Suchita, please take it away. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I am a speech and language pathologist, and my role primarily is helping people um, get their lives back uh, to a place where they can uh, live a successful, meaningful life in spite of some of the symptoms uh, that emerge after a, an interruption to the brain functioning. Uh, for the practical purposes, uh, I will not be discussing uh, distinction between ruptured versus treated aneurysms. I will be treating both of them as uh, brain injury. And uh, uh, as uh, you heard, that this will be a two-part seminar. We will be talking about presentation, and then we will be talking about management. So uh, in this session, we will be mostly talking about the presentation of symptoms. And the point that I want to really get across is it is really difficult to understand the scope of some of the hidden symptoms of cognitive, emotional, and psychological symptoms uh, that uh, emerge after a brain injury. Um, so life in general after brain injury, uh, the process uh, in the beginning the help is right there, and it's promptly present in people's lives. Uh, there's a team of people involved in managing, and patient has a, a network of support system. However, uh, as person returns home and as person begins to live a more meaningful life, the symptoms become more clear. At that time, a patient may have only contact with his uh, neurosurgeon or uh, his primary care doctor or may or may not have a whole rehab team behind him. The second important thing to remember is symptoms themselves are slow to emerge. And what I mean by that, um, during the initial stages of uh, recovery, the patient is uh, resting or is not uh, returning, doesn't return to her full capacity. So he doesn't, uh, is not required to manage his daily life, manage children, manage family. Uh, so when somebody's resting, when, when, when someone is not doing multitasking, it is hard to notice multitasking deficits. So they are slow to emerge. Uh, finally, uh, the many quality of life changes emerge insidiously, and they only uh, are visible once somebody attempts to live a multifaceted life. And that's the tricky part to uh, remember. So uh, life, as it is, as we know, is not easy uh, or is never without problems. But there is definite change after a ruptured or treated aneurysm that it leads to some level of dependence on the world around you. And it may be uh, dependence if somebody's diagnosed uh, with seizures in addition uh, to having to go through recovery, they may not be able to drive. So if they're not able to drive, then of course they have, uh, they depend on somebody taking them around or taking them for appointments. If somebody uh, cannot uh, be, um, is not able to walk or is not able to take care of ADLs, activities of daily living. There's a huge amount of dependence uh, that emerges. And it also affects the person who is taking care of the person who is going through recovery. And there has to be a lot of adjustments to be made. Uh, noticing these changes in quality of life, there's a general sense of discouragement, as well as there is a true mental fatigue that only can happen when a person uh, uh, engages in cognitive tasks. So there's something called concentration headaches, for example. So when you begin to work harder in thinking and concentrating, you uh, experience uh, headaches, and those headaches can uh, lead to discouraging uh, discouragement, and person may not attempt to go back to a task that require a lot of concentration. Uh, so let's go over some of the symptoms. Uh, and I have broken them down into uh, cognitive, and emotional and behavioral symptoms. And I have also, I'm going to describe uh, its impact on social life as well as vocational and academic or professional life. So a primary system that I, uh, in my experience, uh, that gets affected the most is your attentional regulatory system. Or in simple words, we describe that as ability to focus.